Hey, Storytime friends. How are you today? I am Miss Lisa from Worthington Park Library, and I'm coming at you for another story time. Uh, wherever you are, I don't know. How are you watching? Are you watching this on a phone or on your TV? I don't know. All right. Well, I am going to start with the same way we've been starting most of our story times, the more we get together. Can you show me, do you remember the sign for more? For more, we have our hands give kind of kisses. More. Good job. The next sign that we use is the sign for together. We put our two fists next to each other and we stir a big pot together. All right, and then we'll need the sign for happy. I have no cutesy way to remember happy. Just happy. All right, and then the last sign that you can use if you have super fast, ready to go fingers. How are yours? Are they super fast today? You can fit in friend. So we'll have two hooks that give a hug and give a hug. Are you ready? All right. We sing this one a cappella, which means I never know where we're going to start. So it's a fun adventure for everybody. The more we get together, 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 the more we get together, the happier we'll be when your friends are my friends and my friends are your friends. The more we get together, the happier we'll be. Very good. All right. So we start all of our story times like that. Um, and then today we're going to be talking about imagination. What does imagination mean? This is one of my favorite themes because I love to see what things my friends can come up with in story time. So I'm wearing last year's story or summer reading theme because it was all about creating magic and creating in your imagination fun things. Um, it ended up being really perfect for a summer where we were mostly at home, wasn't it? <laughs> All right. Hey, speaking of our summer reading theme, if you want, and it's okay with your grown up, you can color in to try to make bookmarks for our summer reading. Now it is a contest, but you can make three up to three bookmarks um, and you'll color them in. You can find the form either at the library or on our website and you can print it out at home and you can color in your ideas and bring them in and then you might win and get to have them turn into real bookmarks. Our theme this summer is I think play ball, but I'm not 100% sure, so you should check and see. All right, so let's go ahead and start with a little bit of our stories about imagination. Now, I don't know if you have any names that you get called besides your name. Do you have any other names? You know what, I have a secret fancy name I do. My real name is Elizabeth. I know, but I go by Lisa all the time. But sometimes when I was little, my mom would call me see ya because I was gone a lot. I would just go do things. All right. So you might have a nickname that you get called. One of my daughters was called Ellie Belly for a long time and then she stopped liking it. So we had to change. And this book is a little bit about that. And it's also happening in somebody's imagination. Ready? This is called I'm Not a Mouse. And it's by Evgenia Golumbeva. And she did the words and the pictures for this book. Can you guess what her mom might call her? I'm not a mouse. I love my mom, but for some reason, she always calls me mouse. Uh-oh, whoosh, what happened to her? There she was, whoosh, what happened? I don't like being called mouse. It's not fun getting changed into a mouse at all. Oh, look at how big her backpack is now. That'd be really hard to carry, wouldn't it? There was the time I was about to blow out my birthday candles when mom shouted, mouse, oh no, what was she holding? And then when she turned into a mouse, oh no. And on the weekend, I was playing a soccer match when mom cheered, go mouse. Oh. Sweet, sweet. 
That would be a lot scarier as a mouse, wouldn't it? Another time I was roller skating with mom when mouse, oh no, help. What is she doing now? She's inside the roller skates, isn't she? And worst of all, I was petting our cat when mom came in. Mouse! <gasps> Yum! <laughs> so what happened in her imagination? She <gasps> turned into a mouse. Oh no. I'd had enough. I'm not a mouse! Have you ever gotten to that point where you just need to yell? I know. We all get to the point where we need to yell sometimes. Yeah, I bet if she had just talked to her mom calmly, her mom probably would have listened. But sometimes we feel like we have to yell. So one day, after school, I had an idea. I didn't answer when mom called. Mouse, I kept quiet and didn't move. Mouse, mouse, mouse. Oh, she's not listening, is she? She called me by my name, and I liked that. Olivia! Oh, now she's listening. I love you, Olivia, said Mom, and I'm sorry. I only use your pet name because I love you so very much. And guess what happened then? <gasps> my little pumpkin. It was Lydia's dad who had come to get her. Oh, what'd she turn into? She turned into a pumpkin. And then Hussam's auntie arrived. My little sweet pea. Eek! And when we went to the park, I couldn't believe my eyes. Honey, my sweetie, our treasure, my flower, our little kitten, my little strawberry, our cutie bear, my superstar. What did they all turn into? See that? They all turn into the thing that their grown-ups were calling them. Oh, no. Best of all, when we went to the movie that evening with Granddad, he said to Mom, my little chicken. Oh, no. Whoosh. What did her mom turn into? Oh, mom doesn't like being called little chicken anymore, huh? And then, oh, she's just giggling away. There are all sorts of other funny little nicknames in the back. <laughs> yeah, I was very excited because I realized I haven't used very many of these with my kiddos. All right, do you have a nickname? Do you like your nickname? <laughs> yeah, sometimes we do, sometimes we don't. Sometimes it's just related to your name. Yeah, but if you don't like it, I bet that you can talk to the grown-ups who call you that and then they can change. Yeah, it might take time and they might make mistakes a couple times. All right, so that is I'm Not a Mouse. And it's a fun little imagination story. Now we are going to do a song and you probably are familiar with the song. And I don't know if you remember, last week I introduced you to the ukulele. And I have just started learning to play the ukulele, like less than a week ago. So I am going to try another song. I told you I was going to keep practicing. And when we practice at hard things, we get a little bit better at them every time. So we're gonna see if I can do this the first time today. And that would be pretty exciting. Are you ready? All right, it is a song that I bet you know it's called, If You're Happy and You Know It. Do you know that one? All right, let's see if I can do it. <laughs> if you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, then your face will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. All right, it wasn't perfect. Told you it wasn't going to be, huh? All right, so we are going to do, if you're happy and you know it, you know that tune, don't you? You're familiar. Did you clap? 
I forgot to tell you to clap. Oh boy. All right. Now, instead of doing the whole song with the ukulele, we're going to make it pretty silly and we're going to use our imaginations and we are going to do, are you ready? This is one of my friend's favorites. Yeah. I have one little friend I know, especially that is going to be super excited to see this. If you're a robot and you know it. Now, instead of your face will surely show it, your circuit board is going to show it. And this one has moving pieces, but you should get up at home if you have the space and you are able, you should get up and dance along. Are you ready? The inside's not shiny, so it's not quite as distracting as the front. And this is, is by David A. Carter. I forgot to say that part. Ready? If you're a robot and you know it, clap your hands. If you're a robot and you know it, clap your hands. If you're a robot and you know it, then your circuit board will show it. If you're a robot and you know it, clap your hands. Did you clap your hands? Do you want to hear him clap his hands again? It's pretty loud. Isn't that impressive? I love this pop-up. If you're a robot and you know it, stomp your feet. Can you stomp? If you're a robot and you know it, stomp your feet. If you're a robot and you know it, then your circuit board will show it. If you're a robot and you know it, stomp your feet. Good job. Can you stand on one foot for a long time? Probably not as long as this robot, huh? Oh, this one's tricky. We're going to do two things at the same time. You're going to jump up and down, and you're going to beep when you jump. You ready? If you're a robot and you know it, jump and beep. Beep! If you're a robot and you know it, jump and beep. Beep, beep. If you're a robot and you know it, then your circuit board will show it. If you're a robot and you know it, jump and beep. Beep, beep. Good job. Oh, if you're a robot and you know it, stretch your limbs. Wait a minute. What are limbs? Do you know what limbs are? They're your arms and your legs. And you're going to stretch them as high as you can. And as low as you can. You're going to get as long as you can make your body. Are you ready? If you're a robot and you know it, stretch your limbs. Stretch. Can you stretch like that? That's pretty far. If you're a robot and you know it, stretch your limbs. If you're a robot and you know it, then your circuit board will show it. If you're a robot and you know it, stretch your limbs. Good job. Oh, this one's tricky. Let's see if you can do it. Can you get your wings clapping? Ooh, my wings are getting a little rusty. If you're a robot and you know it, fly away. If you're a robot and you know it, fly away. If you're a robot and you know it, then your circuit board will show it. If you're a robot and you know it, fly away. All right, everybody freeze. I always like to double check. Grown-ups, are your kids still around? Did we lose anybody? Did anybody fly out of an open window? Okay, we keep going. If they did, pause, come back. All right, this page is the most musically beautiful. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. You're gonna kind of go like this. Speak with your eyes, ready? If you're a robot and you know it, shoot laser beams out of your eyes. If you're a robot and you know it, shoot laser beams out of your eyes. If you're a robot and you know it, then your circuit board will show it. If you're a robot and you know it, shoot laser beams out of your eyes. Very nice. Did you get your laser beams? Whew. You know what? That's one nice thing about being virtual. None of you are shooting your laser beams at me. Mm -hmm. In person, I get shot with so many laser beam eyes. All right. We're going to end it the same way you end the regular song. If you're a robot and you know it, shout hooray. Hooray. If you're a robot and you know it, shout hooray. If you're a robot and you know it, then your circuit board will show it. If you're a robot and you know it, shout hooray. Hooray! Very nice. Thank you so much for doing that super silly song with me. It is one of my favorites. All right, speaking of favorites, this is just a whole story time of my favorites. We're going to be doing this next book, Not a Box. And it's by Antoinette Portis. And I love the simplicity of this story. It's so sweet. And there's the front, not a box. Oh, I hit my ukulele. Oops. Why are you sitting on a box or in a box? Hmm. What do you think the bunny's doing? 
Can you guess this? All right. I like to play in boxes too. Yeah. My kids like to make choo-choo trains and rocket ships. Sometimes they just like to sit in a box and color it. Mm -hmm. Let's see. It's not a box. What is it? It's a race car. The rabbit's driving a race car. And it looks like they are going pretty fast. What are you doing on top of that box? Boxes are not known for their structural integrity. This is probably not the safest idea. It's not a box. What is it now? Can you tell? Do you see how all of the imagination lines are red? Mm -hmm. Oh no! Give away a secret. Okay. Let's look at the next page. Why are you squirting a box? Hey friends, don't squirt things with the hose unless you get permission from a grown-up. What do you think? Why do you think you might be squirting the box? Hey bunny, let's see. I said it's not a box. What is it now? Oh, yeah, it's a building. Now you're wearing a box? Mm, it goes with our song we just sang. This is not a box. What is the bunny now? They are a robot. So silly. Oh. Are you still sitting around in that box? It's not, 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 not a box. What is it? Pirate ship, a basket of a hot air balloon. Ooh, riding on an elephant and riding in a little tugboat. Wow, that's so many ideas. Well, what is it then? What do you think it is? Oh, where's my thinking rabbit page? There it is. Oh, thinking about it, aren't they? Let's see. It's my not a box. I love not a box because we love playing with boxes at my house. We do. Another thing we love to do, and we're going to talk about this a tiny bit more if you ever watch the ideas to do related to the story time theme. Another one of our favorite things to do is scribble games where one of us will draw a scribbly, scribbly picture and then the other one has to try to figure out how to turn it in to something else. So you might make a big scribbly circle and the other person might turn it into a pig. Yeah. So you can play a game where you go back and forth and you draw a squiggle, a squiggle line of some sort, and then the other person tries to turn it into something else. Now related to that drawing game is one of my favorite stories about making up a story and it's called Chalk. Now in Chalk, by Mr. Bill Thomas Thompson, there are no words at all. Now, when I read wordless picture books in story time, it works a little better because my friends are with me and they can tell me what they see in the pictures. Because when I'm back here, I don't see anything. What's happening? Can you tell me? All right, so I need you to still help me tell the story, okay? Even though we're not together. Growing up, so wordless picture books have a lot of merit because they're some of the earliest books that our friends can read to us. Um, they are learning to tell a story through the pictures and they're still working on those book concepts like this is the front, this is how we open a book, this is how we turn the page. All right. This book has gorgeous illustrations. They look almost like pictures. So pretty. Chalk. Also, there's a playground near us that has this toy in it. What does that toy look like? Oh, I see springs at the back on the bottom. It looks like a dinosaur. What is this? 
Hmm. Let's see. What do you see happening here? I'm impressed that these friends are playing out in the rain, walking along, having a good time. <gasps> what are they getting close to? What is that? Are you? What's in there? Is that sidewalk chalk? Oh. Well, maybe she has an idea. What do you think? She drew a sun. And then, what happened? The sun came out of the picture. How is that? Have you ever drawn something on the sidewalk and then the thing came to life and became real? Probably not. This is a fun imagination story, isn't it? All right, let's see what else. Oh, the sun went up into the sky. What's gonna happen when the sun goes into the sky and it was rainy and cloudy? You are right now, it's all sunny. Oh, I think this friend has an idea. What do you think? Oh, can you tell what they are drawing? Doesn't that look realistic? So beautiful. All right. You are right, the butterflies. Oh, the butterflies are filling the air around them. All right. We're taking a long time with this wordless picture book, aren't we? They're so fun. You can spend as long as you want in the meat of them. All right, what about this friend? What color did they pick? Can you tell? A green? What do you think they might be thinking of with a green? <gasps> what does that look like? Do you get guesses? <gasps> oh no! What did he draw? Oh, I think you're right. I think he drew a dinosaur. Oh, do you think they look like that was a good idea? What about on their faces? Do they look like that was a good idea? I don't think so either. Oh, oh now we can really see their faces. Oh, oh. Oh, they're trying to get away from them. Climbing into the slide was a very good idea. My friends who are good at dinosaurs, do you have any guesses what kind of dinosaur that is? Mm. Yeah, I, I don't spend a lot of time studying dinosaurs, so I think you're right. What? What do you think that dinosaur wants? Hmm. Oh, that same friend had a really good idea, though. What are they drawing? What's rain going to do? Chalk. Have you ever drawn on the sidewalk in chalk and then have the rain come down? <gasps> Splish, splash. Look at all those big raindrops. What's going to happen to the dinosaur? <gasps> oh, look, he's going to melt. Melting into a puddle. Because that's what happens when sidewalk chalk gets wet. Hmm. And then look, they hang up the sidewalk chalk so that the next friend can have an adventure. I don't know that I would draw a dinosaur. Hmm. What do you think you would draw if you found chalk that brought things to life? What would you draw? That's a pretty fun idea. I bet one of my kids would draw a hippo. Mm -hmm. I bet another friend would probably draw a unicorn. Do you think you'd like to draw a unicorn? Yeah? That could be a really fun activity. So maybe if it's nice today, after you're done watching this, maybe you could go outside and draw what you would like to see come to life with chalk. Let's see if it works. 
I have a couple other stories I really like doing. We're just not going to do them today. Um, and I don't know. Do you have an imaginary friend? Do you have a friend that lives with you? Yeah, we had a lot of imaginary friends when one of my kids was little. Lots and lots. Like hundreds. Yep. Loads of them. And it was so much fun. And I loved having all those imaginary friends live with us. Well, this story is The Adventures of Beagle, the unimaginary friend. And it's by Dan Sant Santat. And the pictures are super cute. And Beagle is an imaginary friend who is looking for his buddy. Oh boy. So he's going to adventure and go try to find his person. Lots of fun going through the real world. Oh, I see a little imaginary friend right there. Let's see. I think, I think there are some other imaginary friends in the book too. Let me see. Oh, yep, there's some imaginary friends. Isn't that fun? Um, so it's a sweet story about a friend looking for another friend. And another story that I wanted to do, but I was worried it might be a little bit too scary. But it's super fun because it builds on how some families like to tell big stories. And it's called Octopus Soup. Or stew. Oh goodness. Octopus stew. And it is by Eric Velasquez. And the pictures in this one are so fantastic. And it is about a grandmother and her grandson who decided to make octopus stew. But uh, they got too big of an octopus. And then And so it's all about the boy telling the story of what happened. And it is a fun story, but I was worried it might be a touch too scary for some of my younger friends. So we didn't do it today, but if you can handle a tiny bit scary, you might like that one. All right. I think that is all I have for you today. Story wise, I hope that you had a good time and you enjoyed our imagination story time. I hope it gave you lots of fun ideas to try at home and to use your imagination a little bit. All right, let's go ahead and end with our tickle the clouds. Are you ready? Show me your tickling fingers. Ready? We're gonna reach way up high and tickle the clouds and tickle your toes. Turn around and tickle your nose. Reach down low, reach up high. Story time's over. Let's wave goodbye. Bye friends. Take care of each other, use your fun imaginations, and I'll see you soon.